boy, a funny talkie. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 comedies from the 1930s. For our series on the top comedies of all time, we've chosen comedy films per decade based on their iconic status, critical acclaim, box office success, watchability, and, of course, how funny they are. Hello, Dada! This is part of a series of videos spanning the decades of comedic films from the 1930s to the 2000s. Number 10, Ninochka. To us, Ninochka. Greta Garbo was a big name back in the 30s. Just ask your grandparents. Why do you bring this up after all these years? But rarely did she ever stray into the waters of comedy. It's funny to look back. I was brought up on goat's milk, had a ration of vodka in the army, and now champagne. Ninochka pokes light fun at madcap Russians under the rule of Joseph Stalin, without ever outright mocking the Soviet Union. A Russian. I love Russians. Satire and charm are heavy, and Garbo will put a smile on your face with her razor-sharp quips and 1930s charm. You know the jokes you told me a few days ago? I wake up in the middle of the night and laugh. Bella Lugosi even makes an appearance. Don't waste my time, camarade. Do your duty. Goodbye. Are you sure this is your bag? But of course it is. Are you doubting me? Not in the least, madame. Number nine, Trouble in Paradise. Well, I hardly think so, but let's look. A gentleman thief played by Herbert Marshall and a beautiful pickpocket portrayed by Miriam Hopkins team up in this match made in romantic comedy heaven. I'm mad about you, my little shoplifter, my sweet little pickpocket. As with most rom-coms, a love triangle is soon established. Well, uh, yes and no. But don't be put off by the film's romantic exterior, as it offers a lot in the way of comedy as well, especially when the two attempt to get the better of one another. What day is today? The 14th of May. And tomorrow is the 15th. And the day after tomorrow? The 6th. Uh. <sighs> Trouble in Paradise has aged like fine wine. I think we should have a cocktail and can still make you laugh with the best of them. I know you love me. Oh, why don't you say something? Come on, be brilliant. Talk yourself out of it. Bluff yourself in. Shut up, you liar, you! <laughs> Number eight, Modern Times. Charlie Chaplin was a master of silent comedy. And in his final non-talky film, he doesn't fail to bring the laughter. Working in a dehumanizing factory and on an increasingly complex assembly line, the little tramp finds himself beaten and buffeted by the factory's insane machine, while his boss looks on menacingly. His struggles continue when he's forced to find another job. While Modern Times is evidently a commentary on the looming threat of modern technology, Chaplin manages to inject the film with his own brand of hilarious slapstick and unforgettable charm. Is there anything wrong with my nose? Yes, I like it. Number seven, Midnight. You promised me a dance. I uh, did I? A midnight dance. Oh, but please, it's not. Uh, it, uh... Sophisticated humor abounds in this comedy about a poor showgirl who schemes with a rich man so he can win his wife back from the arms of another man. She's in love with him. In her role as Eve Peabody, Claudette Colbert delivers the laughs with expert timing and seemingly off-the-cuff lines. I need a taxi to find myself a job. <laughs> I need a job to pay for the taxi. Just check out the scene at the hat shop, which is a series of thinly veiled insults. Oh, I think it's a dream on you. You know, it, it does something for your face. It, it gives you a chin. Meanwhile, John Barrymore, a staple of 1930s comedy, is hilarious as the eccentric millionaire. Do you know him? Yes. It's early screwball at its finest. Goodbye now, dear. I'll see you soon. This is the land of the free. The last man nearly ruined this place. He didn't know what to do with it. If you think this country's bad off now, just wait till I get through with it. Number six, duck soup. I welcome you with open arms. Is that so? How late do you stay open? 
now widely regarded as one of the Marx Brothers' seminal films. This political satire about a bankrupt country and ineffective dictator is instantly recognizable for many of its slapstick gags. I'm a man of oh. few words. I'm a man of one word, scram. The famous scene in which Groucho Marx's every move is mimicked by an impersonator in a mirror frame has been parodied countless times over. As with most of the Marx Brothers productions, the sight gags and slapstick provide timeless laughs, and it's considered a classic in the comedy canon. Why? <laughs> you know, we do know each other. Well, of course we do. We've known each other for years. Aren't you, Nick Child? Number five. The Thin Man. Well, that's a hot one. As tipsy sleuths Nick and Nora Charles, William Powell and Myrna Loy join forces in this comedy mystery about the disappearance of the eponymous Thin Man and the murder of a woman named Julia Wolf. Where were you the afternoon she was knocked off? So you don't think I had anything to do Where with it? Where were you? Though seemingly a detective drama on the surface, the movie delivers laughs and smiles in all the right places. Nice food, isn't it? Yes, it's the best dinner I ever listened to. The pair's on-screen chemistry goes a long way, and their back-and-forth banter is always good for a giggle. Oh, Nikki, I love you, because you know such lovely people. No surprise, it was nominated for Best Picture. Well, congratulations. Yeah, well, you wouldn't mind if I looked around. Me, do you need to? Number four, The Awful Truth. I wouldn't do that if I were you. This screwball comedy finds divorce in the cards for a married couple after they begin suspecting one another of being unfaithful. Just get on with the divorce proceedings. I can hardly right. wait. However, while their separation plans are being made, husband and wife go to insane lengths to keep each other from getting remarried. Well, I'm convinced he must care about me or he wouldn't do the funny things he does. Cary Grant is charmingly hilarious opposite Irene Dunn who gives a deep and bitingly satirical performance as his soon-to-be ex-wife. Yes, I'm sure you'll be very happy. Just one viewing, and you're sure to find that over three quarters of a century have done nothing to strip the awful truth of its charm and wit. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Dan, I do laugh at the oddest times. I never oh, you? <laughs> you see what I mean? I mean <laughs> what does it say? What does it say? Are you pleased with baby? No. Baby? Mark. Mark? Number three. Bringing up baby. You've given away baby? Yeah. You had no right to do that. He doesn't belong to you. Oh, it's all your fault, you ruined. Oh, I've had enough. I quit. Howard Hawks, Cary Grant, and Katherine Hepburn are all names that needed no help bringing audiences into movie theaters separately. You're so good looking without your glasses. Put them all together, and what you have is a madcap comedy with romantic elements that also happens to feature a leopard. <laughs> While it wasn't considered successful initially, it has since grown in popularity. Yes, but goodness knows how long that's gonna last. Bringing Up Baby didn't only demonstrate Hepburn's talent for low comedy, but also helped cheer up the masses during the Great Depression. Who are you? What? Who are you? What do you want? Well, who are you? I don't know. I'm not quite myself today. In addition, the screwball comedy effectively fleshed out a pretty convincing love story while remaining timeless and refreshing. Well, my dear young lady, you don't seem to realize you've placed me in a very embarrassing position. Number two, my man Godfrey. And so out of the ruins of Godfrey Park, a new edifice has sprung up in the form of Godfrey Smith. A scavenger hunt between two wealthy socialites leads to the hiring of the eponymous Godfrey, a hobo who is more than meets the eye. How'd you like to make five dollars? Uh, I didn't quite catch what you said. A biting social commentary that pokes fun at the rich and gives center stage to the poor. My Man Godfrey is chock full of the zaniness that defines screwball comedy. Ah, uh, money, money, money. The Frankenstein monster that destroys souls. The comic timing of actors William Powell, Carol Lombard, and Eugene Pallet makes this movie an enduring and hilarious classic. I assure you, it'll be a pleasure for me to go back to a society of really important people. Before we unveil our pick for comedy of the 1930s, here are a few honorable mentions. Tear me to pieces. I'm knocking down and pick him up and then knock him down again and then pick him <laughs> no, up and then... Happened yet. It's going to happen. Oh, it is, is it? The only thing that's going to happen to him is a terrible accident. I'll seize him by the... I'm thinking that maybe you ain't the most tittering imbecile on earth. I'm thinking that maybe you've learned your lesson. Even a simple concussion may have curious effects upon an imaginative person. Yes, 
But I can remember every little detail. Her name, Miss Froy, everything. So interesting. You remember me. I'm Henderson, plain clothes man. You look more like an old clothes man to me. Oh, yeah? If you keep that up, we're not going to get anywhere. Number one, it happened one night. Excuse me, lady, but that upon which you sit is mine. Frank Capra proves that matters of the heart always trump dire circumstances. I couldn't live without you. <laughs> Produced during the Great Depression, this film about two completely different people falling for each other against all odds manages to pull at the heartstrings as well as tickle the funny bone. He did an excellent job. He kept me thoroughly entertained. Clark Gable's scheming out-of-work reporter blackmails Claudette Colbert's rich heiress in order to secure a juicy story. It's the biggest scoop of the year. Timelessly funny and charming, It Happened One Night is a must-watch for fans of comedies, romances, and cinema in general. Come on, baby! Get a police escort! Do you agree with our list? Well, the whole thing's so new to me. What's your favorite 1930s comedy? <laughs> for more hilarious top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Why, my partner, he's got a nose just like a bloodhound. Oh, really? Yeah, and the rest of his face don't look so good either.